Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one. We got the ultimate PUBG attachment guide. I've been working on this thing for months. I mean, you guys know I've been talking about it forever. We go over 18 different attachments that can affect 15 different weapon parameters. So we break all those down. I show you guys which are the best attachments and why, when to use certain attachments. And then I give you a fun little challenge at the end to maybe test the way you think about a very popular certain attachments. Now, if you like today's video, don't forget to leave a like and share it with a buddy and subscribe for more PUBG content. We've got a lot of great stuff coming in the works. Season 11 is coming literally next week. So I'll have this channel packed full of more PUBG content for y'all. All right, guys, now with that out the way, I hope you got your water, your coffee, or your energy drink ready. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, now to get the most out of today's video, we need to cover just some basic things about PUBG's weapon recoil control so that you have a better understanding of how each of these attachments can affect your gun. Number one is the easiest way that you can control your recoil without any attachments is utilizing your player's positioning. So when you're standing, you'll have the most recoil in PUBG. When you're crouched, you'll automatically have a recoil reduction. And when you're prone, you'll have the biggest recoil reduction. Now throughout today's test, I'm gonna be utilizing the crouch positioning when I'm spraying the weapons. And occasionally I'll do a standing position, single tap fire. But just so you know, we have an even baseline when comparing each attachment we will be in the same crouch position. Next up is that PUBG's weapons recoil mechanics are very, very unique where they all have different deviation patterns. So unlike a game like say Counter-Strike or Valorant where the weapon shoots a certain way and it's always gonna have the same recoil pattern that you can anticipate, Every weapon in PUBG has multiple recoil patterns. So if you were to shoot, say, two or three magazines of the same exact weapon with the same exact attachments, those weapon recoil patterns would actually deviate from each other. They wouldn't line up exactly the same. And so that makes it even much more important in determining which attachments you should or don't want to have on your weapon. Lastly, for today's video, we just need to set up a good baseline recoil test to compare each of the attachments. Now the M4 is one of the most popular weapons right now. So let's go ahead and use that. We'll do no attachments, just a red dot. We'll do a crouched spray. And this is what we'll compare each of the next attachments to. All right, now first up is the vertical forward grip. This is actually one of the most popular grips in the game for a number of reasons. It's really, really good for sprays with weapons that have high rates of fire or large amounts of vertical recoil, like the barrel or the vector and it gives you weapon stability after shot, which means it's actually a really good single tap fire grip as well, because if you're tap firing, the second shot of your tap fire will be much closer to your first shot, meaning that your bullet spread is much tighter and you're much more accurate with each succession shot. Now, as you can see in this comparison, the no grip to vert grip shows that the vertical grip has a much tighter spread in its vertical recoil control. And the first, 10 or 15 bullets are actually really tight together, whereas the no grip comparison kind of starts to fluctuate after about six or seven bullets. Now that is really important because a lot of the times you're gonna get your kill within your first 10 bullets of your spray. So having those really close together is gonna make it much easier for you to hit your target in close to mid range. And going back to the weapon stability after shot, the vert grip is an excellent choice for DMRs or single fire ARs because each shot after is gonna be much closer to the first shot, which means you're gonna to have to adjust for your recoil much less, making it easier to hit follow-up shots. All right, now we get to look at the angled foregrip, and this is one of the most unique grips in PUBG because it actually gives you three different weapon stats. It gives you plus two horizontal recoil control, plus one ADS speed, and minus one weapon steadiness. Now, looking at the first and most important one is the horizontal recoil control. This is gonna reduce the amount of recoil left and right that your weapon produces, allowing you to focus more on your vertical pull down control, which a lot of players seem to love. And as you can see in the comparison from no grip to the angle four grip, it is quite significant. The angle four grip does give you a much more concise and up and down weapon spray more consistently in fact as well. Now, as you move into say 20 plus bullets in your magazine, it does start to deviate a little bit, but you can see it does kind of go in a straight line. It's not bouncing around left and right, which means if you do find yourself into a long weapon spray or a three and four X weapon spray, this is a really good grip for that. Now, the next feature for this grip is actually a negative. It's a minus weapon steadiness, which means if you're using this grip as I say a single tap fire grip, you're gonna get much more weapon sway where your gun or your crosshair rather 
is going to move side to side and up and down more frequently on its own. And moving on to the last attribute of the angle grip is going to be the plus one ADS speed. Now, this means that you can get in and out of ADS much faster than your competition, which is going to benefit you in two different ways. Number one, your close quarters combat. You're going to be able to scope in and shoot your enemy more quickly than they will be able to. And number two, if you do happen to use a larger scope with this grip, larger scopes take a longer time to aim down sight so this is going to help cut down some of that time so it's kind of like a double-edged sword you get to zoom in faster than you would without it but you're going to lose some of that weapon steadiness all right now let's take a look at the thumb grip which is a very unique hybrid type grip that kind of combines some of the benefits of a vertical and an angle grip to almost give you the best of both worlds with some compromises now the thumb grip is going to give you plus two ADS speed, plus one vertical recoil control, and plus one weapon steadiness. If we start off looking at the thumb grip's recoil pattern test, we can see it's quite clear. It does have a, a slight improvement over the vertical recoil as compared to no grip, but not quite as significant as the vertical grip itself. Now in terms of horizontal reduction, you don't get anything here. So this grip really is best suited for weapons that don't have crazy recoil patterns to begin with. So something like maybe an M4 or a UMP would be a great alternative for this grip. Now where the thumb grip really shines is the weapon steadiness and the ADS speed improvements. Now in terms of the weapon steadiness, this is a good alternative grip if you're looking to have something that you can single tap fire with for an AR or pop onto a DMR because it is going to help steady your sight without you having to make adjustments yourself. But that's not really where this grip shines. Where this grip really excels is close quarters combat and longer scope ADS speed with its ADS improvements. So just like the angle grip, this grip is going to be able to aim down sight faster so you can lock onto your target quicker and start firing more accurately. In addition, if you do happen to pop this grip on, on let's say an SKS or a Mutant where you have a 6X attached to it, this plus two ADS speed is going to allow you to zoom down into that sight much faster than you would with like say a vert grip or even no grip at all. All right, now next up is the interesting half grip. This is the first and only grip to introduce a plus one recoil control, a plus one recoil recovery, and a minus one weapon steadiness. Now what recoil control means is that it's gonna reduce the total amount of recoil deviation for that weapon. So in essence, it's gonna slightly reduce both the horizontal and vertical recoil, which can be really nice. Now looking at the recoil pattern test, the half grip actually performs really well. It's got a pretty nice tight spread between horizontal and vertical recoil. And then even once you get past like 15 or 20 bullets in your magazine, the total vertical recoil is, is actually still really controllable. So this could be a good grip on almost any weapon since it slightly reduces both horizontal and vertical recoil. Now looking at the next step, the recoil recovery, this is really ideal for weapons that you don't really shoot the entire magazine in one go. You kind of do short little bursts. So you do like a little five or seven bullet spray. You let the weapon rest for a second, five or seven bullet spray, and you kind of repeat that process. The half grip will reduce the amount of time it takes for your weapon to go back to zero recoil from each spray. So it helps you kind of get in and out of the fight of each of your sprays a bit faster. The first weapon that comes to mind that's really ideal for this is something like a vector. Because even if you have, you know, an extended mag on the vector, you're looking at what, 33 bullets or so? You're going to blow through those with a 900 or 90 rate of fire very fast. So in some cases with the vector, you might only shoot 10 bullets, let the gun rest, and then reshoot another 10 once you've gained recoil control back. And this will help improve that time in between those bursts. And the last step by now, I'm sure you understand, is the weapon sway. Having the half grip is going to increase the amount of weapon sway that your gun has. Now moving along to the very purpose-built lightweight grip. This grip has no frills. It has no additional vertical recoil, no additional horizontal recoil. It is strictly meant for single tap weapons. This is gonna give you plus two weapon stability after shot and plus one weapon steadiness. Now I still did the recoil pattern test just to give you an idea of how it's gonna look. It's almost a spitting image of the no grip test. So you can expect a very similar recoil pattern there. It won't perform any worse, but it definitely won't perform any better. Where this grip tends to shine is its single fire usage. So when you pair it with something like a mutant or an SKS, or if you have to, you can put it on a single tap AR, you know, with a 3X, 4X or a 6X. It's a very, very stable grip. So the weapon sway is very, very minimal. 
but the best part about this grip is the plus two weapon stability after shot. It's the best stat grip for using single fire weapons. So guns like the SKS or the Mutant, when you're doing your single tap fire, each second shot is gonna be incredibly close to that first shot you hit, allowing you to get a lot of really cool double shots where you can hit double headshot or chest shot, headshot very, very fast and very consistently. Now on my channel, I've recently put up a couple of videos with the SKS and the Mutant going absolutely crazy with this grip setup. So I highly recommend you give it a try. All right, now the next one up is very straightforward, guys. It's just the laser sight, which does nothing to recoil, but it does improve your hip fire accuracy and your soft aim accuracy. And by soft aim, I mean whatever key you have bound to aim, A-I-M. So not ADSing and not just hip firing, but that in-between aim that you can do. And as you can see on the graph, the two on the left are hip fire with and without the laser sight. You can see the laser sight's a bit more uh, concise. Then on the right side, that's soft aim with and without the laser sight. And you can see the crosshair is a little bit tighter with the laser sight, making sure you have a better accuracy. All right, guys, well, that's it. We did it. We reviewed all the grips in PUBG. And if I had to give like an overall score, I would say the vertical grip is the most universal and best grip for weapon sprays, followed closely by the angle grip. The thumb grip, I would say, is a hybrid grip best for veteran players who are willing to sacrifice some of that recoil control for that higher ADS speed for quick peak shots. And then the lightweight grip is the go-to grip for all your single fire needs, giving you the best stability and weapon shot accuracy. Now let's move on to the different attachments. So let's start off with the magazine and uh, I'll make this a little fun introduction because I had a big goofball moment on stream about a month ago. I completely forgot that there was an extended quick draw magazine for AR. I was running around the map with an extended magazine and my chat kept telling me, I'm like, what do you mean? There's no difference. So I don't know why, but I had a huge brain fart about the extended quick draw magazine and I promised them that I would include it in this video. So there you go. You can make fun of me. Uh, now moving on, there are three different types of magazines for each weapon. There's the quick draw, which gives you 30% reload speed reduction. There's the extended magazine, which gives you no reload speed, but increased ammo capacity. And the extended quick draw, which gives you 30% reload speed and the extended ammo capacity. Now there's two fun facts about reloading that you need to remember. Number one is you can reload even faster by doing something called the tactical reload. And this is where you reload your weapon with more than zero bullets in the magazine. So let's say you're spraying down an enemy. As long as you leave one bullet in the magazine before you hit the reload button, the animation to rechamber around will not have to be complete, meaning you cut down a few half seconds on the reload time. In addition, once the UI of the game recognizes that the ammo is in the gun, so that number gets highlighted, you can then cancel the reload animation by doing a number of things. You can swap to another weapon, you can pull out a grenade or your pan, or you can interrupt it via animations like open and closing doors or getting in and out of vehicles. This is a quicker way to have your gun reloaded and still keep your momentum of your character moving. Okay, next up is bullet loops. Now these are pretty self-explanatory. They're only usable on shotguns and uh, Card 98 and Mosin Agant. They will increase your reload speed by 30%. And with sniper rifles, you only have to make a decision really, do you want faster reload speed or do you perhaps want to use a cheek pad, which we'll cover in a second. All right, now speaking of cheek pads, these are the unsung heroes of sniper rifles. If you have a DMR and you don't have a cheek pad on it, you are at a severe disadvantage. Cheek pads are able to give you plus two vertical recoil control, plus two weapon stability after shot, and another plus one on weapon steadiness. So they'll make your weapon more steady when aiming down sight. Your follow-up shots will be much more consistent and close together. And your total amount of vertical recoil will be significantly reduced. So these are a no-brainer. Always put them on a DMR when you can. All right, so now we're moving on to the tactical stocks, of which there's only two. There's an interchangeable one for the Uzi and Scorpion, and then there's the interchangeable one for the M4, the M249, and the MP5K. Now, like the last few attachments, the tack stocks are pretty self-explanatory. The one for the Uzi gives you recoil, recovery, and weapon steadiness. Now, uh, just like we discussed earlier, these are going to be great for rapid fire weapons. And as you can see from the recoil pattern, they do significantly control your recoil much more easily. Now, the tack stock for the M4 is a little bit more intricate, so it's also going to have recoil recovery and weapon steadiness, but it adds weapon stability after shot and ADS speed, 
both of which are really good for single fire tapping guns and close quarters combat. Although you can see from the recoil pattern test, it isn't much different from a bare bones M4, and that's because it's not giving you any increased vertical or horizontal recoil control. All right, guys, if you're sticking around this long, make sure you give that video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. We're at the home stretch. We're almost finished now. So we're going to go over the barrel attachments for the shotgun, AR, and DMRs. All right, guys, so the shotgun attachments, we got the choke and the duck bill. Now, to keep it simple, the choke is going to give you a tighter total pellet spread, which is more ideal for longer distance shots with a shotgun. The duck bill is going to give you vertical orientation pellet spread. This is more ideal for close quarters combat as you're less likely to miss pellets by shooting outside of the body. All right, guys, now it's time to wrap it up with the AR DMR attachments. Now, this is for the flash hider, suppressor, and compensator. Now, at first, you'd think that this should be pretty straightforward, but I've got an interesting little challenge for you that might make you second guess which attachment you're going to prefer. So let's just start off with the basic spray pattern test with no attachments, a compensator, flash hider, and suppressor to see which is best. Now, looking at the recoil pattern, unsurprisingly, the compensator does perform the best here in terms of horizontal and vertical recoil control, as it should. The flash hider comes in second here, but the suppressor actually performed quite well, better than I expected, because for some reason when playing the game, I feel like the suppressor on full auto, I miss more of my shots. And I don't know if it's like a placebo effect or if there's actually something going on with the stats. But based on this demonstration here, the suppressor performs almost as good, if not better than the flash hider. Now, which brings me to my final point. So it's, it's pretty clear if you're doing a full auto spray, the compensator is the way to go. But what if you're not? What if you're doing a single tap fire spray with an AR or even better yet with a DMR or a Mutant or an M16? Is having that slightly better recoil control more beneficial than not being seen or being harder to be spotted? So with that question, I put together a fun little experiment. I'm going to show you an example of getting shot at by a compensator, a flash hider, and a suppressor. And I'm curious to see how long it takes you to spot the shooter. All right now guys, be honest. Did you see the shooter before the compensator was shown? Did you have any idea? Let me know in the comments below. So just think about that the next time you go to pick up an attachment, whether you're in a 1v1 situation, you're trying to avoid being third party by another shooter, or you're trying to be a little bit selfish in your squad match and you don't want to get seen before your teammates do. Maybe consider picking up that flash shatter or the suppressor next time. Oh, and just as one final note on the barrel attachments, the suppressor doesn't do any damage reduction, any bullet velocity reduction, nothing like that, but it does make your barrel a little bit longer, which means that it can be more easily hit against like a wall or a window if you're trying to snipe from a window or if you're moving through a building in close quarters combat. So just think about that. The suppressor does have that downside to it. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, again, leave a like, share it with a buddy, subscribe for more content, and don't forget to check out some of our other awesome Ultimate PUBG guides. We've got a guide on scopes, on looting, on healing, on graphics, on sound. I mean, you name it, it's here. So go check it out. Thank you guys for the support, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.